Welcome to the 30s Guide. My name is Priska Jordan and in today's video we're talking about the sandals that are available to shop for in 2022 that are going to last you for years including what is going to be trendy for a little while and what is at the right quality to price point ratio. So for strappy heels, I have a pair that I bought in spring. They are black and block heels. They're from DSW, and something that I've noticed about DSW is that you can find the same brands with very similar styles for half the price that you would get from a department store. Since I live in the South, shopping for sandals is sort of like a year-round sport. I wear sandals spring, summer, fall, and sometimes early winter, so it's something that I want to last all throughout the year and for several years to come. I never buy sandals that I plan to only wear for that one year based on a trend. However, I don't want to be wearing the sandals that I wore 10 or 15 years ago. So in today's video, I am going to talk about some of the trends, but really how to gear your shopping for sandals in a way that's going to fit your lifestyle needs for the next several years. If you're new to the 30s guide, let me introduce myself. My goal with the 30s guide, my mission, is to equip you to curate a very intentional wardrobe. So that doesn't mean we're all going to enjoy the same pieces, especially not with footwear, but it does mean that I'm giving you a really good description of a sandal and you're going to make your own decision based on your style, lifestyle, and budget price point. With that said, I don't want you wasting any money whatsoever on pieces that are in your closet that aren't functional for your lifestyle. So my savvy shopper tip for today's video is to buy shoes based on outfits you already own rather than buying really fun special shoes and then trying to build an outfit to wear those shoes with. I did that all throughout my 20s and I used to have a shoe case of about 100 shoes. I would typically wear like the same five pairs of shoes every week. Now I own just around a dozen pairs of shoes and I wear them all. Nothing is an art piece or something that I spent money on and now feel too guilty about letting go of. Everything I own, I actually wear. So the lesson that I learned is that if you buy a pair of shoes just because you adore those pair of shoes but you have no way of incorporating it into your current wardrobe, then you're going to continue your sunk cost for that pair of shoes because you're going to have to buy more clothes to wear those shoes with. So instead, what I recommend is that you look in your closet, build some outfits that maybe you don't have shoes to wear with yet, and then take inventory of what types of shoes would match those outfits and the type of activities you're going to be doing in those. For example, in spring, I bought a pair of black strappy sandals with a block heel. And I knew that this was sort of a trendy piece this year. However, I know that I'm going to wear black sandals a lot. I have very dark hair, so it complements that sandwich rule for me with colors. And I looked inside my closet. I have a lot of black and white type of spring summer wear, but I didn't have black strappy sandals that would go with it. So I knew it was a missing piece of my wardrobe that would be incorporated very regularly this year and for years to come. However, a trend that I am not buying into this year is the neon green sandal. I'm not saying you should, I'm just saying I am not because it doesn't go with my wardrobe at all. If I bought neon green sandals, I would have to buy whole outfits to complement those sandals. So this is not a trend I'm buying into. Now that you know today's savvy shopper tip of buying shoes that go with outfits you already own, let's get right into the three categories of sandals we're covering today, including flat sandals, low or mid heel, and high heel. In the flat sandal category, let's look at slides, slingbacks, and flip-flops. Slides are really great if you are someone who works from home, you're basically in and out of your shoes all day, you are looking for a casual kind of daytime look. Slingbacks are really good if you're walking around a lot more. Like I like to wear slingbacks when I am traveling because I tend to walk 10 miles a day or so. So if I'm not in white sneakers, I am likely in slingback sandals. And flip-flops are your classic flat sandal. A lot of people wear them to the beach or to the pool. And I know a lot of mamas like to wear them because they're in and out of their shoes, chasing around the kids in the backyard, that type of thing. I personally do not own flip-flops because I find that my slide sandals 
fill in that gap of if you're going to the beach or the pool or yoga or bar class and you just need something to slide your feet into, sort of more athletic wear. I have athletic slides that I've had for several years. I will link those and all the shoes shown down in the description box below. This first pair I'm showing you is from Vince Camuto and I bought them from DSW about three years ago. They have been a great sandal, but one thing I will note is that the material is very slick. It's like a polished type of not real leather. So in humid climates, they tend to slip off. However, most of the time they are just fine. Like I said, I've had them for a few years. I will link something similar that is currently available down below. The second pair of slide sandals in my wardrobe are by Tori Birch, and these are really, really, really comfortable. I just bought them this year, so I'll link them down below. The footbed is very well padded, and the quality of the leather is really good. Additionally, the top part of the sandal is a padded leather, which is really trendy right now, but also very comfortable to walk in. Now, if you're considering buying a not neutral color sandal, First off, know that it is popular, so you've got a wide range of picks this year. But secondly, study your wardrobe and know what's going to work for it. I often say that red and maroon are a couple of neutrals in my wardrobe because I have so much of these colors. So I knew that a red slide sandal would work just fine for me. The next sandal we have are slingbacks, and I really enjoy wearing slingbacks because I like walking around outside a lot, especially when I'm traveling, but really on an everyday basis. So slingbacks work very well for me. I just got rid of this pair that I've had for a few years because they were looking really dingy. They were cheap, so I knew they weren't going to last very long, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to jump on the slingback trend. Uh, it turns out I do. So here are a pair that I'm considering buying, and I'll probably wait a couple of weeks to make sure I'm sure about this decision. And thirdly, we have flip-flops. If you're someone who doesn't wear flip-flops a lot, maybe just to the beach and to the pool, then I would recommend this pair from Amazon that has a leather-like look, so a little bit more elevated than your basic rubber flip-flop. But if you're someone who wears flip-flops quite a bit more, then I would recommend this pair that are available at many of the local boutiques, but if you go to the company's website, then they've got them in a range of colors. They have a padded footbed, so they're going to be more comfortable if you're using your flip-flops quite a bit. The second category of sandals are low heel or mid heel. And I'm using these interchangeably because the types of sandals available in either low heel or mid heel are very comparable. The three that I'm showing you today are strappy, mules, or block heels. Strappy heels are really good if you want to dress up a daytime look or even have something to wear with like a casual evening look. Heeled mules are similar to flat slide sandals where they have that one large strap in the middle of the foot and they kind of fill that same role as slide sandals. The utility of mules is very similar to slide sandals but more for a professional look or if you just need to add that couple three inches of height. If you are in and out of your shoes during the day but you need more of a professional look then a heeled mule will work really well for you. And lastly, we have my favorite grouping in the low to mid heel category, and that is block heels, which I'm so glad for because if you're wearing a stiletto versus a block heel, a stiletto is going to be a lot more precarious of a situation, especially if you're walking through a sidewalk with any cracks in it or grass or even going up and down stairs, whereas a block heel is going to give you a lot more stability in walking and standing and it's going to bring more comfort. All of my low and mid heel sandals are block heels. They're really good if you're going to coffee, if you're going to a meeting, or if you're going to a coffee meeting, <laughs> go with block heels. In the low to mid heel category, I've had three pairs of shoes in my wardrobe that I can show you. Two of them are strappy, all three of them are block heels, and I actually don't own any mules. I do not work in a professional setting. I work from home, so I don't need them for anything. However, I will have examples of all three that I think would look really good in any wardrobe that I'll link down below. For strappy heels, I have a pair that I bought in spring. They are black and block heeled. Um, very trendy right now, but also going to last for several years. 
They're from DSW and something that I've noticed about DSW is that you can find the same brands with very similar styles for half the price that you would get from a department store. So if you're not that particular about the details of your shoes and you're really looking for $50 shoes or $75 shoes versus twice that price, then DSW is a really good way to go. However, if you are very picky and you notice some things that you like more with the department stores, you'll pay twice as much, but you'll get exactly what you want. So really it is up to your quality, style, lifestyle, and budget needs. And in short, do you boo boo. These black strappy sandals by Mark Fisher have been a key player already in my spring summer wardrobe and they are so comfortable to walk in that I actually threw out my high heel black sandals that I usually wear for evening wear. I would rather have a look that is a little less elevated and more comfortable because to me it is more chic to be able to walk around comfortably than to have your feet screaming at you all night. The second pair of strappy sandals that are in my wardrobe are these low heel block heels from Steve Madden. I've had them for several years, so up close, they're looking a little tattered. I might need to replace them, but I've just been wearing them all of the time and they work really well. The last mid heel example I wanna show you from my wardrobe are both strappy and block heels, and they're quite trendy for 2022, but I can tell I'm going to love these for years to come. They have a funky heel, they've got a triangle heel. I actually got a compliment from a stranger in a store about just the heel part of the sandal. And then they also have the wrap around detail for the strap around the ankle, which you can either wear as a full bow to add some drama or in a more sleek and minimal kind of way. I did not forget about the mule mid heels, but since I don't own any, here are a couple of pictures of some that I think look really good and will help elevate a daytime look and still be easy to walk in. So if you are a teacher, an office professional, these would be a really good pick for you. Now the first category of sandals was flats, the second was low and mid heels, and the final category is high heels. The three types of shoes I want to focus on in the high heel category are wedges, pumps, and platforms. Now wedges are really good if you're trying to lengthen your legs with a high heel, but you also want the stability and casualness of something like a wedge. So they're really good for outdoor weddings, especially if you're going to be walking around in grass or any type of landscaped area. You're less likely to trip in a wedge than in a stiletto, which might get stuck in that grass. But for an indoor wedding or any type of formal event, a high heel stiletto or a pump might be your best bet. At this point in my life, I only own two pairs of high heel sandals, and that's just because I don't wear them very much, but I have two extraordinary pairs that I'm excited to show you. The first pair are a strappy pump stiletto with a four inch heel. I think I got these a few years ago from Dillard's and I wear them probably three or four times a year for special occasions, especially around the holidays. I think it's really important to have one formal outfit that is always in your closet ready to go because if someone calls and says, hey, I have extra tickets to the ballet or I need a plus one for a wedding, you want to seize that opportunity and if you have something in your wardrobe already, you're more likely to say, yes, let's go have some fun. And lastly, we have platforms which can add drama and height. And platforms can actually be platform pumps or platform wedges. All it's referring to is that sole part under the toe having some depth to it. So it can be a half inch platform, a one inch platform, a two inch platform, and that's going to add a lot of drama and height to your look. I just bought my favorite pair of shoes I've ever owned and these are sort of trend driven shoes. They are sky high platforms. The first week that I had them, I wore them every day just around the house because they are delightful. I love being so tall in them. So if you find a pair of sandals that maybe you're not gonna wear very much, but they are just really darling and you already have some outfits in your wardrobe for them, you know, have some fun. Fashion isn't supposed to be just analytical and checking all the boxes. It is supposed to be something that just makes your day, makes your heart happy. So have some fun with it. Now that you've seen all the sandals I wanted to show you today, the flats, the low and mid heel, and the high heels, I hope you feel better equipped to go shopping and find sandals that really work for your style, lifestyle, quality level, and 
budget. And remember, today's savvy shopper tip is to buy shoes for outfits you already own. So go through your closet and decide what color do I need, what heel height do I need, what style do I need, and then go shopping. That is going to help you curate an intentional wardrobe, which is our mission here at The 30s Guide. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like, and if you're not already, please subscribe to the channel. We have a new video coming every week. I'll see you next time. Bye.